I'm guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba, back here at Dirty Adventure Scuba. <laughs> yeah, neat name. If you look back, one of my uh, recently passed videos <laughs> will explain why it's called Dirty Adventures. Well, we're going to do a diaphragm regulator. Now, externally, they're very similar. It's very difficult to tell a uh, piston regulator from a diaphragm regulator from the outside, unless you know the models and you know that this happens to be. But if I just say, which is this? It's going to be difficult. So externally, they're they're quite similar looking. Internally, <laughs> different kettle of fish. No relationship. In fact, when the piston regulator first came out, people said, "Hey, what the hell is this?" You know, because one moving bird. How could that possibly do what a diaphragm regulator had been doing for many, many years? Now you need to appreciate that the first regulators were diaphragm regulators because people thought in terms of flexible rubber diaphragm which can sense pressure. You see, the piston regulator is a very uh, science-driven device. Depends entirely on physics. Now the end result is exactly the same. Just to recap, and this applies to this conversation as well, the end result from any regulator, and in this particular case we're talking about the first stage only, the end result is to deliver 150 psi, we're going to call that the intermediate pressure, 150 psi supply of air to the diver, specifically to the second stage which is in his mouth. So that's all the first stage does. Let's take a look at the, uh, the diaphragm regulator and see exactly how it does that. That's it. There's all the parts. Now I say all the parts. <clears throat> Remember earlier I mentioned that a piston regulator has one moving part. That's not true. That's a, that's a complete lie. It actually has two because there's a spring in the piston regulator as well. So there's a piston and there's a spring that actually move. And the moving parts the way I have here, not a dozen. But go back to my piston uh, regulator. Uh, 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 Kevin will find it and you compare the two as we talk. Okay, so now what we have now then is all the parts of this diaphragm regulator. Let's take a look up here if we can. Kevin, can you talk up here for just a minute? This is a diaphragm first stage, okay? Now from the top, high pressure air comes in like so, through the filter. They don't show the filter in this diagram, but the filter is right there. High pressure air comes in. Now if you remember, we had that little wee cute little spring in there. There it is. And then inside of that, you can see that inside of that is that little high pressure seat. It sits like that. And it has, you see that black area right there? That's the silicone or rubber surface that comes down. And if you can take a close look there, Kevin, you'll notice that down in the body, can I show you that? Oh yeah. Down in the body in here, there's a little, see those two projections? It's actually a cone that that rubber seat sits on. And when the rubber seat sits on that cone, air can't get through. Can you zoom in here, Kevin? Right down, you see that? You see that little cone down in there with this round surface that's nice and that's where that seat sits. Okay, so this seat goes down and sits on that cone. And when you put the spring in there and the little carrier and the filter and the clip, this is sealed. Mm. Air can't get through. Remember, the high pressure air is coming down through here. So now three, you put this on the tank, right? 3,000 PSI is pushing like that. Trust me, that high pressure seat is jammed against the cone. Air can't get through. Okay, so far, you with me? Okay. So now we have the diaphragm first stage on the tank. Air is turned on. Nothing's happening because the air can't get through. Well, what do we do if we want some air? Well, we have to get some air. So here's what you do next. What you do next is you put a pin. You see the pin right there? <coughs> I have to jump around a bit here, Kevin. Sorry. See the pin? Right there. And that pin goes right through that little hole in the cone and pushes on the seat. Let me show it to you here in real life. There it is. That's the pin. It's got a little mushroom seat on the top and a pin sticking out the bottom. Nothing fancy about it, but that drops down into here, like that, and goes right through and pushes on that seat. And now I can put the pin from the other side into the hole, 
and it actually sits right there and it actually pushes on that high pressure seat. Now watch, can you see? I'm going to push on the pin, push on it, pops back out. And it's only moving a fraction of an inch, but that's what happens. And what's it doing? Well, right in here, right in here you can see that pin is pushing on the seat. And when it pushes on that seat, it lifts the seat off the cone. Well, when it lifts the seat off the cone, high pressure air can go through the hole into this chamber right here. So that's all that little pad does. It just pushes the high pressure seat a little wee bit to let some high pressure air in. So there's the pin. The pin goes right through. And when I press on the pin, it goes down, pops back up. Doesn't move much, just a fraction of an inch. And it's pushing on that high pressure seat lifting it slightly off the cone so high pressure air can get past the seat into the regulator. Well, what pushes that pin up and down? The diaphragm. That's what it does. Yeah, you just slide the diaphragm in there, which is flexible. You slide the diaphragm in like that, and that diaphragm now moves up and down a little wee bit. That's okay. A little wee bit, like that. And you put the body back together, and like that, and you got it done. Take a look over here again. Let's just see where we are. So this red line is that rubber diaphragm right there and it pushes on the pin the pin pushes on the high pressure seat and moves it away a little wee bit so now the high pressure air from the tank can go skirting around <laughs> goes around the seat into this chamber right here and from there it goes to you second stage goes off like this why doesn't it just free flow all the time why doesn't it just race out of there all the time well the second stage is a valve as well and when you're drawing on it, you open the valve. When you stop drawing on it, you shut the valve. When you shut the valve, the air pressure builds up in here. And as the air pressure builds up in this little chamber, it starts to push the diaphragm up. Down in this case, it pushes the diaphragm this way. And it pushes the diaphragm this way. The pin stops pushing on the high pressure seat. The high pressure seat closes on the cone and stops the tank air, the high pressure air, from getting past it. It's just about that simple. So now the next thing you're going to ask, of course, is, well, how does it know when it gets to 150 PSI? <laughs> how do you get it set for 150 PSI? So there's a diaphragm right down in there. And sitting on top of the diaphragm is that big spring I mentioned to you. And pushing on that big spring is the adjusting nut. It fits right like that over that spring. Just like so. And then, X and drive it. Push that down. That's the spring in there. That squiggly thing is the spring. It pushes on the diaphragm. And it pushes the diaphragm in a little bit so that the pin pushes the seat, uh, the, uh, the seat off of the cone, lets some high pressure air in. Well, that's perfect. But when the high pressure air builds up in here, You've got your, you've stopped breathing, remember, so the valve's closed. The high pressure air builds up in this chamber. It gets higher and higher and pushes the, pushes the, uh, the uh, diaphragm down like this until it reaches 150. How does it reach 150? Well, because you've adjusted this spring so it's pushing with a force of 150 PSI. When the air pressure in here from the tank reaches 150 because the valve was open, it pushes the diaphragm down, shuts the valve. It stops at 150. That's why you have a constant supply of, of uh, low pressure air, intermediate pressure air in there at 150. Now I know that was very really pretty quick, but we haven't got all day. I've explained that to you. But let, I have two more diagrams over here, which might help a great deal as well. And I chose this particular regular to show you because this particular regular is very, very common. Almost all diaphragm regulators are the same. Some have special features. They may have what they call antifreeze, which is not true, or all environmental. They may be balanced, which is very slightly different. But the basic, very basic design of a diaphragm regulator is exactly what we've seen. Now this one right here, if Kevin can come in a little closer again, is almost exactly the same. Watch, I'll go through the parts. From the top, knob, here's your yoke. This big black thing is the nut that holds the yoke to the body. Now inside, if you look right there, you'll see the spring, and you'll see the seat, moves up and down, 
and you see this black line across here that's part of the body and right there you can see the cone again the two points of the cone sticking up it's actually a round cone and there's the pin going through here's the diaphragm right here and the spring on the outside and the host of the second stage over here we can actually get a picture of the air flow as this as this device changes all right so first of all put the first stage on the tank the second stage is closed meaning you're not breathing on it so 3000 psi comes through the filter and into that seat cone combination and right now you just put it on you just turned it on so that cone is not sitting on the seat it's open if you like so the high pressure air can you see those little arrows there kevin the high pressure seat goes around the high pressure air goes around through that cone into this chamber fills it up and the pressure builds up and it builds up and it builds up until eventually you see it's pushing on the diaphragm eventually the pressure there builds up and it pushes the diaphragm down you notice that the diaphragm right here is curved like this that way let's go down to the next picture same picture a few seconds later high pressure airs come in filled up the chamber pushed on the diaphragm and now the diaphragm is pushed down it's actually compressed the spring and what that's done, if you see the difference right here, you see that the seat is now closed. The seat is down against the cone. Different from that. And the air can't get through. So it stops. And the air in this area here, which is feeding your mouthpiece, is 150 PSI because that's where we set the spring. Now, let's assume that you decide to take a breath. Third diagram here, Kev. You take a breath. Second stage is open. So now that intermediate pressure of 150 starts traveling to your second stage. As soon as it does that, the pressure is off the diaphragm because the pressure came out of here. The pressure is off the diaphragm. The big spring pushes the diaphragm back up. See the two arrows? Pushes the diaphragm back up, which pushes the pin, which opens the valve, and you get more air from the tank. Simple. <laughs> not necessarily. I know if you've not seen this before, or not had it explained before, it doesn't look sometimes as simple, but it really is. And I hope you'll also have some idea of how a diaphragm first stage works. It's just that simple. Okay. All right, I'm going to let you go. That's enough. Alec Pierce, tech tip. We'll maybe talk some more about this because it is really interesting. And we haven't talked about balance yet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> It'll be fun. Alec Pierce, tech tips here at 30 Adventure Scuba.